It's Mike here, and today I'm gonna to respond to What I've Learned's recent video titled Meat Grows the Brain or Rust the Body, and it's all about heme iron. I've wanted to do a heme iron video for a while, so here we go. Well, I do appreciate some of the iron facts in the video. The video is in defense of heme iron. It more or less makes the case that you require heme iron to have a healthy diet. In addition, he sort of downplays the risks of heme iron in the literature for various diseases, as well as just getting the most fear-mongering statistic in the video about pregnant women completely wrong, and we'll go into details about that. But let's just go. What I've learned is a channel with 1.2 million subscribers, and I previously did a response video to his video on nitroso compounds in meat defending those those in terms of meat being a carcinogen. But he's also done videos that were you know, very favorable of the carnivore diet, whether he meant to or not. And that's just ridiculous because there's no research behind the carnivore diet. So for whatever reason, he's made a chain of videos more or less defending meat. And I don't know why he's doing it, but he is. And the next one in line is this one on heme iron, which until the Impossible Burger synthesized heme iron from the roots of soy plants, it was only found in animal products. It was mainly red meat and lower levels in fish and chicken. And to be clear, for those that have not fully realized it, this heme is from the hemoglobin in blood, in animal blood. A little gross. Anyway, let's just go. The first part of his video, I don't really feel a need to address. I'll just cover some historical trends of the industry, trying to get people to eat more meat, but then also how nowadays people are trying to get you to eat less meat, like Arnold. Go, Arnold. Heme iron is said to increase your risk for heart disease and even cancer, particularly colon cancer. But I think everyone knows that we need iron. The WHO estimates 25% of the population to be anemic. He's framing the video fine, but then he goes and uses a bit of a frustrating anecdote for me. Depending on the person and their lifestyle, iron stores can deplete rapidly when you stop ingesting heme iron. YouTuber Liam Thompson tried eating no meat or fish for one year. Near the end of the first six months, he noticed he was a bit tired and was requiring more sleep. So he went to get a blood test. The test showed that his iron level had halved. So one YouTuber who decided to not eat meat for a while got low iron levels. Despite having taken supplements and using other strategies for increasing iron, his iron level halved again. And then his iron levels kept going down when he was supplementing still. So supplements just don't work. That is not the case. Supplements absolutely do work from this randomized control trial. They looked at women with low iron levels after 12 weeks of iron supplementation, they increased ferritin by 11 micrograms per liter, and below 12 is deficient, so that would just blast away anybody's deficiency, even if they were pretty much dead. And ferritin is a great measure of iron stores in the body, but in terms of this YouTuber, I don't really know enough about what he was doing to get any real idea, but just from the one second of footage that he showed, it's clear that he is slamming down calcium supplements super high level calcium supplements. We're talking 600 milligrams of elemental calcium here. Problem is calcium supplements will dramatically decrease the absorption of iron supplements, especially at doses that high. Should this one guy be extrapolated to the entire population of people that don't eat meat? Should vegans especially be worried? They're not eating any animal products. Well, let's look to this most recent study on vegan blood levels. And the reality is that numerically, their ferritin levels were actually a little bit higher than the people that ate meat, but statistically, there was no difference. And then just to throw my own anecdote in there, one of my very good friends actually had severe lifelong anemia until she went vegan. Anyway, anecdotes are fun. He then once again tries to undermine the WHO's finding that red meat is a carcinogen, and the WHO points to heme iron as one of the reasons, so what does he say? In fact, that WHO report that told us processed meat caused cancer, most likely colon cancer, specifically says, there is inadequate evidence in experimental animals that red meat or processed meat cause cancer. If the WHO doesn't think that heme iron was one of the reasons that red meat is a carcinogen, then why do they include it in their materials? Why on this page is it the first ingredient in red meat that they point to as to why meat causes cancer? I don't know. Oh wait, they never said that heme wasn't a concern. If you look at those quotes, they're just talking about rats or animals. But then when talking about a study that showed that heme iron made tumors worse in rats, he says that, well, these aren't really valid because they actually induced those tumors in rats with toxic compounds. The rats were given control diet before being injected with dimethylhydrazine. Dimethylhydrazine is a carcinogen, a cancer-causing substance. We chose to initiate all rats with the carcinogen because another study found that a high heme iron diet does not cause colon cancer in rats. 
making it seem like heme iron would never cause cancer in any natural circumstance. Well, from this study, it's important to note that, quote, because rodents such as rats have almost no spontaneous colon cancer, they are given a carcinogen to induce colon tumors. So to be relevant to a human model, you have to start that cancer and then expose them to different potential carcinogens to see how they respond. Obviously, I, I hate all of this, but the point is that rats are wildly different than humans. First of all, a rat colon is only about 10 to 15 centimeters long, and it has a pretty fast transit time. Those rodents poop a lot, but us, we actually have a colon that's 10 times longer. It takes longer for things to pass through, and we have a massively longer lifespan. So all of these things mean that something like heme iron would have more of an opportunity to do some DNA damage in our colon, which could potentially cause cancer. And if heme isn't a carcinogen, then it wouldn't really have any negative effect on human colon cells, would it? Well, from this study, looking at human colon cells, they found that hemoglobin increased DNA damage in primary cells and concluded that hemoglobin slash hemin, whether available from red meat or from bowel bleeding, may pose genotoxic and cytotoxic risk to human colon cells, both of which contribute to initiation and progression of colorectal carcinogenesis. So no one WHO quote on animal studies does not put heme iron off the hook here. And since their announcement, we've had more studies linking it in animal models. For example, this one that found that heme iron increased precancerous lesions, tumor load, and was genotoxic to the colon. So the case is stronger, and we also can't forget that statistically powerful, significant correlation in humans between colorectal cancer and heme iron consumption. It's there, let's not forget about it. It also doesn't stop at colon cancer from this study. High heme iron is also associated with three times the risk of esophageal and two times the risk of stomach cancer. With them saying, quote, iron can cause oxidative stress and DNA damage. And it goes beyond cancer. What about heart disease, our number one killer? Well, from this study, we're talking about a 57% increase of risk of heart disease with higher heme iron consumption, but that does not hold true for non-heme iron consumption. And that's, of course, iron from plants. We also see a 16 to 40% increased risk of stroke depending on BMI with higher heme intake. And maybe heme is a marker for animal fat, which is damaging arteries here. Either way, it's not looking good for red meat. Heme iron is also associated with a significant increased risk of type 2 diabetes, and perhaps most importantly, mortality. Heme iron and processed meat nitrate slash nitrate were independently associated with increased risk of all-cause and cause-specific mortality. Fun! Death is actually the number one cause of death. So be concerned. In addition, the high meat, low carb diets that people might be tempted to eat after watching what I've learned videos are also associated with increased all-cause mortality from this meta-analysis by about 30%. But let's get back on the topic of iron deficiency because it's really his main defense of heme iron consumption. He says, Different WHO report found that globally, 47% of iron deficiencies come from pre-kindergarten children. Unfortunately, iron deficiency anemia in growing children has been associated with cognitive deficits due to abnormal brain development. And he more or less paints this as a meat deficiency, but the reality is it's a deficiency of iron from any source. Looking to WHO data, here's a list of anemia by country in five and under kids. It's clear that this is a developing world, often war-torn country issue. Another nutrient that's a huge issue rivaling iron here is vitamin A, 30% of children in the same age group are deficient globally, but I don't think that what I've learned is gonna make a video on the benefits of carrots anytime soon. But with both the nutrients here, it appears that some increased consumption of dark leafy greens could solve a lot of problems here. From this study on women in Tanzania, only 17% of which are getting enough dietary iron. But the amount of dark green leafy vegetables consumed was the main determinant of vitamin A and iron intake by these women and also corresponded to higher iron status more greens, less anemia. The conclusion of the researchers was actually grow more chard and kale to fight iron deficiency. Cool stuff. Also in terms of heme being a solution for the developing world, I don't think our planet can take it. First of all, a lot of meats like pork, only 40% of the iron in them is heme. Other ones like steak and lamb are higher, but environmentally we can't handle more of these ruminant animals. It's not a solution, and plant-based sources of iron are way cheaper, better for the environment, and they get the job done. If you've got the meat goggles on, the solution is meat, but it doesn't have to be meat. Anyway, moving on. Now for the topic of absorbability, and yes, heme iron is more absorbable in its raw form than plant-based irons, but later on in the video, we're gonna talk about how you can change that. 
Anyway, he spends a good portion of the video painting heme iron as not just superior, but really necessary for health. He mentions this study. As this paper explains, during pregnancy, there appears to be a preferential fetal use of maternally ingested iron derived from a dietary animal-based heme source. The study took 19 women and gave all of them both eight milligrams of heme iron and eight milligrams of non-heme iron. They then traced it to see how much made it to the baby. And I actually thought that heme would have been even more, but the difference wasn't that crazy. But you have to put this into context here because in terms of iron intake, plant iron is much more abundant and eaten in higher levels across the board. Now, for example, four ounces of cooked spinach has three times as much total iron as the same amount, four ounces of steak. Now we're talking six versus two milligrams. So that study wasn't really practical in terms of real life iron intake. And so it's no surprise that looking to vegan populations, they eat way more total iron than meat eaters. Heck, this recent study found that the vegan group was eating nearly twice as much iron as the meat eating group. Not quite, but almost. And at one point, he mentions a study that found that babies had more complex neural networks if their mothers had a higher dietary intake of iron. The higher the iron take throughout the pregnancy, the more complex the gray matter of the brain was at the time of birth. But it didn't specify heme or non, just total iron. So in this case, the vegans are looking a lot better. And in terms of pregnancy health in general, gestational diabetes is a big concern. And from this study, just over 1.1 milligrams of heme iron intake was associated with over twice the risk of gestational diabetes than lower heme consumers. This is where things get really bad. And I think he needs to correct this next part in some way, but it sounds very scary what he says here. Unfortunately, it looks like iron supplements don't cut it for pregnant women. Despite taking prenatal vitamins with iron, 58% of the women had iron levels below normal. Oh my God, 58% of pregnant women, if they don't eat heme iron, are gonna end up being deficient and have stupid babies. Oh, he's so wrong. He's so wrong. After looking through the study forever, maybe I'm wrong, I think he mistakenly took the inverse from this quote, which is actually 42% of the women having low iron stores at delivery. Well, they were anemic in terms of hemoglobin. As this chart shows, only 16% were actually below the 12 microgram cutoff for ferritin or iron store deficiency. And you can see that no babies were deficient at all. Third and worst of all, this stat actually undermines his whole video on heme iron because all 19 of those women were given heme iron throughout their pregnancy. That was what the study was about. And as you can tell by this quote, they actually killed a piglet at Texas A&M to do this. So yeah, they were definitely eating heme iron. I think that pig can vouch for it. So it looks like heme iron doesn't cut it for pregnant women. They all get deficient. No, I'm kidding. But to fact check this, in terms of general pregnancy, we're talking only about 10 to 16% of the US population of pregnant women having deficiencies. And that includes all the women who don't take supplements. As I mentioned before from that randomized control trial, supplements absolutely do work in terms of raising iron levels. So don't let him fool you. This review of 13 studies found that people who don't eat meat, people who don't have a steady supply of heme iron, had consistently lower levels of iron and had consistently higher rates of anemia. This was especially the case for women who could become pregnant. He then says that people who don't eat meat have higher levels of iron deficiency, pointing to this review of studies on vegetarians showing that they had higher rates of iron deficiency. And yeah, I do agree that vegetarians in general, they don't eat meat and instead of replacing it with more iron in the form of plants, they end up eating a lot of dairy and eggs, which is devoid of iron. However, a strong case cannot be made for vegans. They tend to replace meat with iron rich legumes and the studies in here reflect that. Quite a few looked at vegans. First of all, they're all 15 to 20 years old, so that's worth noting. Also, many of them show no difference in terms of iron deficiency rate between vegans and omnivores. Some that do show a little bit, but it's not statistically significant. And one that seemed to show the biggest gap, also not statistically significant, was literally because there were two deficient vegans in the 90s. Like, this is meaningless. And again, we have that newer study showing equivalent iron deficiency rates for vegans. But it's important to note here that it's not giving up meat that is causing anemia here. It's loading your diet with dairy and eggs instead of iron sources. He then has a quote that makes it seem like it's official. Our body loves heme iron. It's way better. Due to heme iron's superior absorption, this review found that despite heme iron constituting only one third of the iron that is actually digested, it makes up two thirds of the average person's total iron stores. 
First of all, that's a Western population that eats a high meat diet. If you're gonna look at long-term vegans or vegetarians that don't eat heme iron, it's gonna be way lower. And one example is the Adventist vegetarians, about 20% of which are vegan, who are you know, arguably the longest living population on earth and they eat no heme iron. So obviously that higher level of heme derived iron in your body is not necessarily a good thing. And in terms of heme iron, guess what? Alcohol consumption actually increases iron absorption. So, so should we all become alcoholics to get higher iron levels? No, clearly alcohol is not a healthy food and it also happens to be a carcinogen. Next, he has a section on iron overload, and I think he gets a lot of this right. He even says that iron overload can have negative effects, even if it's not super high levels, which are rare, just high normal levels. In this short book by P.D. Mangan, prefaced by Dr. Leo Zakarski, he lists various studies on the detrimental effects of excess iron in people without hemochromatosis. But he tries to separate iron overload from meat consumption. Paul Adams, professor of medicine at the University of Western Ontario, says, in a large multi-ethnic population, the most common causes of elevated ferritin levels, the storage form of iron, are likely obesity, inflammation, and daily alcohol consumption. Making it seem like meat isn't responsible ever, but from this paper, quote, overload can also result from excessive absorption of dietary iron due to various causes, including chronic ingestion of greater than adequate amounts of dietary iron, especially from heme, so meat. And he even discusses how, you know, we can't really prevent too much iron from entering our system, and it's probably because iron was rare. So a lot of the excess iron problems that we have in Western populations could simply be from us not being able to limit the absorption of heme iron from meat. And that connects to another disease, which is Alzheimer's, and we'll get to that in a second, but first he takes it from a completely different angle. Here he is. In fact, one component of cognitive decline and Alzheimer's disease is thought to be a heme deficiency. Research has found that hemoglobin and heme itself help reduce inflammation in the brain and clear out the problematic amyloid plaques found in the brain of Alzheimer's patients. Heme deficiency, one might misinterpret this as being a dietary heme deficiency. That's not what the study is talking about. It's talking about brain heme deficiency. The brain literally not getting enough blood. And one reason this could be is that Alzheimer's is a atherosclerotic disease. It's a clogged artery disease. Trigger warning for a nasty image. Here are the brain arteries of Alzheimer's patients versus non-Alzheimer's patients. A lot of Alzheimer's is from starving the brain of blood, from clogging the arteries, from eating animal fat. Eating meat is not a good strategy for preventing Alzheimer's, especially because what is probably a bigger risk in terms of your diet is excess iron consumption from this study. Excess iron actually oxidizes and makes those brain plaques damage the brain more. In the words of a researcher who actually scanned brains of Alzheimer's patients to determine a connection from UCLA, quote, the MRI technology we used in this study allowed us to determine that the increase in iron is occurring together with the tissue damage. The accumulation of iron in the brain may be influenced by modifying environmental environmental factors such as how much red meat and iron dietary supplements we consume. In other words, the scientist who spends their time scanning Alzheimer's brains is pointing to red meat as the possible problem, the exact opposite of what, what I've learned is saying. Final point here, whether it's from the animal fat or the heme iron from this multi-country study, quote, the most important dietary link to Alzheimer's disease appears to be meat consumption with eggs and high fat dairy also contributing. And getting a little tangential, but but keeping on the topic of elderly people, he says that, you know, you shouldn't give up heme iron and meat because protein. But older people might be tempted to avoid good sources of heme iron for some of the reasons I just talked about. Though older people are at risk for sarcopenia, muscle wasting, which is linked to a higher risk for death from all causes. Several studies have shown that the easily absorbable animal protein is good for maintaining muscle mass in the elderly. Problem is from this 2019 study that actually looked at real people's muscle mass and their actual plant versus animal protein intake, they found that it makes no difference. It's just the amount of protein that you eat. Another huge point here is that we're talking a lot about how heme iron is more absorbable, but the thing is when you actually combine plant iron with vitamin C, it becomes much more absorbable in certain cases, six times more absorbable, making it directly competitive or possibly more absorbable than heme iron. Another lesser known one is that if you cook whole grains with garlic or onions, it also increases the iron absorption. And another point, 
As I mentioned earlier, you can get heme iron from the Impossible Burger now that is plant-based. It's available at Burger King now, which is crazy. And while I do think that this is not a health food, at least according to Pat Brown, the heme iron that they use here from soy is actually less oxidizing than the heme iron in meat. Probably still does some damage, but it's unclear how much does anyway. In the end, I wholeheartedly disagree with the positive claims here made about heme iron and what I've learned in this video. It's associated with a ton of diseases. We have an increasing mechanistic connection between heme iron and colorectal cancer. We have that connection between other cancers and we have the diabetes connection, the heart disease, the stroke, the increased mortality studies, it goes on and on. And I do think it was valid for him to say that vegetarians have higher iron deficiency rates, but that point is just not hold up for vegans specifically. And that 58% statistic he used, I don't know what he was thinking, even women who take non-heme supplements are gonna end up 58% low iron in pregnancy. Those women were eating heme iron. They were literally eating piglet blood. And it was just not even a, it was just so wrong in so many ways. You, you heard what I said. And in terms of animal iron solving iron deficiency throughout the world in developing countries, it's not a heme deficiency, it's an iron deficiency. We just need to get them iron. And the last thing we need to do is take populations who are eating low amounts of beef and other ruminant animals and tell them to eat way more, our environment cannot take it. So in the end, eat your greens and legumes. If you're concerned, you can do a few days on chronometer, learn which foods have high iron. Legumes are great, dark leafy greens are great. And if you're really concerned, you can go to the doctor and get a blood test. All right, that's it for today. Feel free to like, subscribe. Let me know down below what you thought about the video and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.